Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. I'm Chris Horner. This is the Bass Country Stage 2, 160 kilometers, about 100 miles in length, and it's lumpy and bumpy. When we get into the final, you know it's a good stage for a field sprint because it's not really a climb up to the finish. It's just a little ramps that they have, little stair step ramps into the finish of today's Stage 2. So you know it's a good stage for the sprinter. When I turned on the channel this morning, before I got my tooth fixed, they pulled it earlier, and then they gave me the mouth guard here with the fake one in. Hopefully it looks good for you fans at home on the Chesterfield that are viewing the butterfly effect right now. Now I'm a little bit lit up, got a little bit of oxycodone in the system, and whatever the dentist gave me, you know it must be good because I'm not in that much pain at the moment, but maybe a little loopy, so maybe I get something wrong on today's stage too. Anyways, when the cameras come on, four riders in the break. They're at about three and a half minutes. We look back at the field. It's Bora Hansgrohe on the front, and they're on the front, of course, because we saw a flying Primoz Roglic in the individual time trial dominate the stage after he made a right turn with about 75 meters to go, turned his bike around, came back, made another right turn, the only rider to make two right turns at the finish here on, today's, on yesterday's individual time trial. So you know he must be impressive to win the stage after giving up about 10 seconds time. Now, when we look at the four riders up front, smaller teams, three and a half minute gap. Like I said, Bora's on the front behind, checking everything and keeping the gap under a realistic goal here. But remember, they don't have to bring these guys back if they don't want to, because no one in this front group can outclimb the top three favorite guys here on the GC when I'm talking Primoz Roglic, Jonas, and of course, Remco Abnipol. Now, at the very back of the field, it's Ethan Hayter. This is an ideal stage for Ethan Hayter to win. And when I was sitting on the Chesterfield this morning, I just thought that when I'm listening to the old GCN commentators of Brian Smith saying, some guys give him a hard time for riding at the back, but I'm okay with it. You're okay, Brian Smith, with the number one favorite here to win the sprint, Ethan Hader, at the back right now, just because his team director's name is Steve Cummings. Now, Steve Cummings rode at the back all the time, but Steve Cummings' resume is not quite like Ethan Hader's. Ethan Hader is a guy who can win against the best in the peloton at the finish of a stage, especially this stage two. Steve Cummings was a rider that got away in the breakaways, then smashed everyone with just pure force and won Tour de France stages. Epic rider, but not a rider that can win against the whole peloton. He has to get away and break away. And just because he's your director sportif for Enos, that doesn't mean that Ethan Hader should be at the back. And he should, certainly shouldn't be taking any lessons from Steve Cummings because he's a completely different type of rider. Well, throughout the early parts of the stage, he's always back there. About 60 kilometers to go, we see the peloton going up the climb. Ethan Hader's held up and he has to stop. It's going to take them two, three kilometers to get back up to the back of the peloton because they're going so fast on these narrow, crazy, technical, slippery roads that we have here at the Bass Country. I've done this race many times. By now, you guys know I won the Bass Country. I know how to ride the Bass Country. You don't ride it from the back, Ethan Hader. No matter what Brian Smith tells you, you stay at the front. It's going to take all the way to about 24 kilometers to go, with Enos leading many times on the front of the peloton after 50 kilometers to go with Ethan Hader at the back. He finally gets to the front with about 24 kilometers to go. Now, there's two objectives here on today's Stage 2. One is the time bonus sprint competition that comes at just over 8.5 kilometers to go. Ethan Hader is a sprinter. He needs to take those time bonifications so that the GC guys can't and they can't get time over Carlos Rodriguez, his GC rider. Now, once we start coming into 13 kilometers to go, Ethan Hader's still at the front. He's still in prime position. Then we see that with just about 13 kilometers to go at that same moment, the breakaway of four riders are all caught and wrapped up here on stage two. So we know it's a good chance it's going to be a field sprint, but it's nervous and ridiculous. There's islands in the middle here at the Bass Country all over the place. It's wet and slippery out there, and we're coming into the sprint time bonification here with just about nine kilometers to go. We're going to see as they come in which out of the last left bend, UAE team Emirates, they're all over the front. Del Toro is going to do a big acceleration. He's going to look back over his shoulder and have enough time to sit up and still get first place time bonifications of three seconds. His team leader, Ayuso, is going to get two seconds. Ramco Abnipol is going to get one. What happened to Ethan Hader is what I'm thinking when I'm sitting on the Chesterfield. And when you go back there the 10 kilometers ago, Ethan Hader was still at the front, but then he started looking backwards left and right and started drifting all the way back. Hopefully at a mechanical or something. Otherwise, he wasn't there to help his teammate Rodriguez out for these time bonifications. And that's why we see Ayuso and Remco Abnipol gaining time on his, on his race GC guy of Enos, Carlos Rodriguez, because Hader didn't do his job. 
That's the second time he didn't do his job. First job is to be at the front, always with your team. The second job is the sprint point competition. And the third job is, of course, to win the stage. Now, Ethan Hayter's out now. He's gone. He's went to the back. I don't know if it's the rainy, slippery roads, if he's scared of that. I don't know if his director, Steve Cummings, or Brian Smith called in and said, hey, you can ride at the back however long you want. It doesn't matter. You're Ethan Hayter. You win all the time. Well, we're not going to see him anymore. His race is over. And up here on the butterfly effect, it was disgusting to watch a rider of his quality if he's dropping out and he has the ability to be at the front. We're coming out of the sprint time bonification. We look over to the left side of the road. Enos are still drilling because they still have objectives. They still have Carlos Rodriguez. That's why you see him at the front. Visma is always around Jonas Vinigo, but he doesn't have a lot of guys. One, two guys throughout this stage. Primoz Roglic has ridden it, dialed all the time at the front. His teammates either riding on the front or around protecting the race leader here on stage two. So he looks fantastic. Remco having to pull the same MO as the other two always in good position coming into the finish of this stage. Now we're coming under seven kilometers to go. We see the islands are still on the road, so you know it's crazy, nervous, and dangerous right now. There's going to be a little bit of a race there when we see Decathlon with six kilometers to go and Jaco Alula there on the left side of the road with a drag race. Decathlon will win it, but they're not going to hold it for much longer because now we're going to see Visma Lisa Bike have two riders at the front. Van Belli's doing a fantastic job for the two-time Tour de France champion, Jonas Finigo. And we look over at FDJ. Germani's doing a great job for Davi Godu. He'll take over the front as we're coming under three kilometers to go. He's got the front locked up. Davi De Godu, who's a big time GC favorite for FDJ, is sitting second wheel. We got a little bit of a kind of a chicane almost coming in with a right and a real quick left, both 90 degree turn sweepers up here in stage two of the Basque Country. As we see Germani going in through the right, he knows to look back for his teammate Davi De Godu. He sees Godu there, but when you're watching, it on video, Godou looks a little bit awkward. He's leaning over just a little bit too much to the right instead of being a little bit over the top of his tires. He'll come through that right turn. He'll make it. As we're coming into the left, though, you see his wheel slide just a little bit, and then wham, his front wheel slides out big time. He's on the concrete going all the way across the road because it's rainy, slippery, and miserable out here on stage two. Luckily for the riders, it doesn't look crazy cold. When we look up front to Germani, he looks back over his shoulder, and every time he knew to look for Davi De Godou, and I think that's because he knows he's not good through these corners. As he looks back over his shoulder, he throws his hands out in disbelief because he knows Davi De Godou's GC run here could be could be really disastrous if this crashes hard on the FDJ rider. But we're under three kilometers to go, so he's not going to lose time on the GC. Now, Germani hops off the front. It's time up front for the next attack. It's AG2R, decathlon rider, throwing in attack. We're coming up to 1.5 kilometers to go. We see it's Movistar, Bora Hansgrohe there stringing the peloton out, trying to bring him back. We go under one kilometer to go. He's brought back, and Bora Hansgrohe's on the front. 900 meters to go. Guess who's getting on the front? Two-time Tour de France winner here. Jonas Vini goes on the front because he wants to stay safe. Guys, he's not trying to win the state. Just trying to stay safe. If I show you some pictures from the back, Remco Evnepoel, as the peloton is split in half from the crash of David Dago do back there, Remco Evnepoel's in the back. When we were watching it live, you saw right away that Primoz Roglic coming out of that crash from David Godu. He was at the front. Then we get another angle from the camera. We know Jonas Vinigo was at the front. Then we get another angle. We know Remco Evnepoel's in this front group. We'll call it 50 riders, but he's close to the back. But he's trying to stay safe. Up front, let's get into 900 meters again because Jonas Vinigo is going full gas on the front trying to stay safe. And he's got it all the way into about 700 meters to go. At 700, we see Decathlon coming flying straight by on the left side. That's Bruno Aramai and Paul Laperia. Paul LaPierre is holding on to his leadout man, Bruno Aramai, there going up the left side as Bruno's throwing everything in. He's on the front with 600 meters to go. He's on the front with 500 meters to go. We get into about 450. Look in the center back there. Two Astana riders in the center. That's Gianni Marco and Baptist Stella. Stella's putting on a marvelous ride. He's trying to find, follow his lead out guy. But when we see Gianni Marco hit the afterburners at about 325 meters to go, we see Movistar riders Serrano and Alex Aaron Burrow pinch off his sprinter, Baptist Stella, who loses the will of Gianni Marco up front. Gianni Marco still throwing in everything. And at 300 meters, 
He's even up there with Bruno Iermeyer and then takes over the lead. Bruno, Bruno moves hard to the left. We see at 250 that Paul Laperia, who Bruno Iermeyer was leading out, he moves hard to the right. He gets a draft for about 25 meters there from Gianni Marco of Astana, and then he's going to throw in a huge kick and acceleration and start taking the left side here to try to win stage two of Tour of the Basque Country. It's going wide up front with about 150 meters to go. It's four wide up there. We see Paul Laperia all the way on the left. We see Gianni Marco there in the middle. And then, of course, we got Movistar riders mixed up in between that and a little further back because the rider in the back, Serrano there, at 100 meters to go, as Gianni Marco, Astana's legs start falling, he drifts back. And then we see the Movistar rider hit the Astana rider hard. His pedals come, his feet come out of his pedals, excuse me. But then look at the picture behind. That's a two time Tour de France defending champion here. Jonas Vinigo back there that could crash if the Astana rider crashes. He holds it up, but let me to show you an aerial view. We see the almost crash there of the Jayco rider that's bumping hard with the rider on his left, and he's holding it up. So everything can end here at a moment with about 100, 150 meters to go, but it's not gonna end for Paul Laperia as he's going hard left. He's accelerating 75 meters to go. He's got a lead on everyone. 50 meters ago, it's looking solid. 30 meters ago, it's so solid that we're going to see the AG2R, the Castellan rider, sit up, celebrate a victory here on Stage 2 Tour of the Basque Country, and move up to 11th on the general classification. We look over to the left side. It's a bike throw right there, and that is Battistella Astana. He salvaged his way after getting blocked from the Movistar rider, found his way out to the right, threw his bike at the line to get second on the stage, Third on the stage, pseudo quick step, Vervaki, who followed the wheel there, Paul Laperia, all the way into the line, will round out the podium for stage two. Primoz Roglic saved his race leader's jersey here. Remco Evnepoel kept it upright. We see that Skilmos kept it upright, and Jonas Vinigo kept it upright. These stages are crazy nervous. I love the Basque Country. Love this feeling because you are never bored. Not any moment throughout this whole stage two of the Basque Country are you bored. From the TV, sometimes you can look at it and go, wow, it doesn't look like they're going hard. All those guys at the front are definitely stressful and fighting for position, but it's still where a rider like Ethan ha Hader has to be if he wants to win the field sprint. You have to be able to battle. Now, if you're not going to battle for yourself, you have to battle for Carlos Rodriguez and help Carlos Rodriguez stay in good positioning through all the crucial moments. And anything after that time bonus sprint with 8.7 kilometers to go, you know was important moments. And then when you start seeing the crashes that come at four kilometers to go, that cost Teo Gagenhart a shot here at the general classification. His hopes are over, but he is still hoping to start tomorrow's stage three here of the Basque Country, while the winner... The winner, Paul LaPerry, he's already won two French Cup races and been top 10 in other races throughout this 24 season. So he is on very good form, there's no doubt about it, but he's happy to win his first big time World Cup victory here in the 24 season. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. I got my tooth back in. I'm ready to roll for tomorrow's stage three. See you guys real soon on the next edition of the Butterfly Effect.